six days before the Passover, when the Lord came into the city of Jerusalem, the children ran to meet him. In their hands they carried palm branches, and with a loud voice cried out, Hosanna to the highest! Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. O gates, lift high your heads, grow higher ancient doors. Let him enter the King of glory. Who is this King of glory? He, the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, we gather on this Palm Sunday, the start of the holiest week in the Church's calendar. And while we are separated physically, we come together in God's Spirit to rejoice that Jesus came to die and save us. And so to prepare this for this celebration and to open ourselves up to God's grace, let us call to mind our sins and ask for his forgiveness and healing. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call the sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, everlasting God, who, as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with the word with him that is weary. Morning by morning he wakens. He wakens my ear to hear those at those as those who are taught. The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave back to those I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been confounded. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord. Let him save him. Let him release him. For in him he delights. For dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked besets me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. But you, O Lord, do not stay afar off. My strength, make haste to help me. I will tell of your name to my kin. 
and praise you in the midst of the assembly. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All descendants of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My, my God, God, my God, God why, why have you forsaken me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself. Taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name, which is above every name. That is the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Christ became obedient for us unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate, the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said to him, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave him no answer, not even a single charge so that the governor wondered greatly. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Barabbas? Or Jesus, who is called Christ. For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much over him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the people to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ. They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water 
and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this righteous man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe upon him, and plaiting a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat upon him, and took the reed and struck him on the head. When they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. As they were marching out, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. This man was compelled to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink, mingled with gall, when he tasted it, he would not drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel, let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders hearing it said, this, is, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with vinegar, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait! Let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many, many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city 
and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, on this Palm Sunday, we listen to the Passion of Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew's Gospel. One of the most striking elements of Matthew's Gospel is how he situates Jesus as the fulfillment of the Old Testament. It is believed that Matthew's community was primarily Jewish converts. And so they had a strong sense, a strong understanding, a good understanding of the Old Testament. And Jesus is seen as the fulfillment of all that they had hoped for, all that they were longing for. And so, as we read this gospel and this little passage regarding the passion of Jesus, we hear Jesus referred to as the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the One whom they were longing for, the One whom they were expecting. And yet, on that Good Friday, that first Good Friday, so many didn't recognize the Christ, the one they were longing for. The priests and the elders and all the people could not see, could not see it. Pilate tells them that he is the but they can't see it. And right at the end of our gospel today, we see that the centurion recognizes who Jesus was. And he and others around him are filled with awe, I suppose a little bit frightened about the earthquake that's just happened. But also, they recognize that these signs, like the earthquake, are pointing clearly to who Jesus is. And so they're able to say, truly, this was the Son of God. Dear friends, as we make our way through this Holy Week, this very different kind of Holy Week, but a Holy Week, hopefully, that will focus us very intently on the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. There are no distractions. There are no things demanding our time and our focus and our energy. And so we can focus completely on what's happening during this Holy Week. Lent, too, has been difficult and unusual. Eh? Perhaps many of the things we thought we were going to do have sort of got turned over because of our national lockdown. But Lent has prepared us in some way or other, has prepared us to begin and to enter into this Holy Week. It allows us to prepare spiritually for these great events, these events that change the world, these events that hopefully have changed me and have changed you. That the death and resurrection of Jesus has so transformed our lives that we are different people because of them. We are able to be free, to live fully for 
God because of these events. And because we are free, we recognize Jesus as the Son of God. That He is our Messiah, our Anointed One, the One we long for, the One we follow, the One we share with others. Let us really hope and pray that this Holy Week will move us to the same understanding as the centurion, to recognize truly who Jesus is for us. And then, a bit of homework, because you know I like to give you homework now and again. This make a real effort in some way to reach out over the telephone, over WhatsApp, over the internet to someone whom you haven't spoken to for a while. Someone who may be lonely, someone who may be going through a tough time. And just say hi, just greet them. Be present to them this holy week. They too need to recognize Christ in their lives. We, you and me as Christians, are Christ in our world today. Friends, perhaps in the quiet of our hearts we can identify that one person we would like to reach out to. Let us bring that person before God now. Let us bring that person into our own thoughts and our own hearts. So that we can journey through this holy week with them, close to them and close to God. Let's pray for them for a moment. Confess our faith, the faith in the God that gives life to us all. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one 
holy, catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we are for you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that Though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice, made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Wilfred and Abel, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, as we make our way through this Holy Week, we want to be close to God. As Jesus suffered, he too cried out to God, that God not forsake him, that God remain with him. Let us pray now in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submitted to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives of faithful discipleship. Thanks be to God.